Ever since police stormed the Lint Cafe in Sydney in December 2014, questions have been asked about whether things could have ended differently. An inquest is now in its final stages and the focus is squarely on the police operation, who made what decisions and why. Questions have been raised about the chain of command, communication, equipment and experience. The critical issue is whether police should have acted sooner, storming the cafe before its manager, Tory Johnson, was killed. Tracy Burden reports. Rush hour on a sunny Monday morning. A man wearing a large backpack made his way up Sydney's Martin Place and walked into the Lint Cafe. I'm, I'm calling from Martin Place. Just after 9.30, a triple zero call was made by the manager of the cafe, Tory Johnson. I need to read a message to you. So Australia is under attack by Islamic State. There are three bombs in three different locations. City car saying, any car that can make their way, please, above Martin Place. Informant uh, is currently being held at gunpoint. Within minutes, the heart of Australia's biggest city was in lockdown. A police operation is underway in Martin Place in Sydney CBD. We have a, uh, an armed offender in premises holding an undisclosed number of hostages in the city. We've moved to a footing that would be consistent with a terrorism event. The inquest began last May and is now in its final segment. Evidence has helped build a picture of what was happening in the cafe during those terrifying 17 hours. Hostages have described an unpredictable, increasingly erratic gunman, desperate for media attention, who threatened to shoot hostages if anyone escaped. We had three specific requests and none of those have been met. Man Harren Monis never spoke directly to police negotiators, using the hostages to pass on his demands. One is to send an IS flag as soon as possible and one hostage will be released. To please broadcast on all media that this is an attack on Australia by the Islamic State. And number three is that we need Tony Abbott to contact the brother on a live feed and five hostages will be released. How significant is it that we now know, it's been presented in evidence, that at no point did the gunman speak directly to negotiators? It's very significant and one, one of the um, core aims of the negotiation team, in fact of the, of, the, of the police response team, is to get a perpetrator into negotiations. He never once, as far as I'm aware, had any direct conversation with the actual negotiators or anybody else. He dealt with it through a third party. How can you turn around and say there would have been a decent outcome out of this when you're not actually dealing with the main man? Hostages have told the inquest that as the hours passed, they felt abandoned. In a call to Channel 9 mid-afternoon, Marsha McHale showed her growing frustration and fear. We understand the Prime Minister is a very busy man. However, I think, you know, the lives of quite a few people here are more important than whatever he's doing right now, whether he's playing I golf understand. or walking with his dog. I don't know what the hell he's doing. Yep. It cannot be more important than picking up the phone and making one phone call. That is not hard. This is really is about setting up command and control so that we make sure that we have a clear police commander in charge. Police were working from the police operations centre in Surrey Hills and a forward command close to the cafe. They adopted what's called a contain and negotiate strategy. Obviously the intent is if you can to negotiate a peaceful resolution to get the hostages out and to get the perpetrator safely into custody so he can be brought before the courts. The plan would only change if a hostage was hurt or killed. This strategy was repeatedly questioned at the inquest. There are always circumstances, and particularly in the modern uh, counter-terrorism environment, where that 
particular uh, default position needs to be reviewed very quickly um, and needs to be adjusted to, to meet the circumstances. The police forward commander quite naturally has the authority to order a, an EA, a breach, an emergency action in the event it's in, in his judgment life is at immediate risk. Two senior New South Wales police were in charge of the siege. First, Assistant Police Commissioner and Counter-Terrorism Chief Mark Murdoch was in command. At about 10 o'clock that night, Assistant Commissioner Mark Jenkins took over. They've both been challenged about the strategies adopted that day. I understood that Mr Monos respected me as a lawyer and perhaps, just perhaps, he would listen to what I had to say. When lawyer Manny Konditsis discovered that the gunman could be his former client, he called the police, offering to help. What do you reckon you would have said to him if you'd have somehow been put on the, on the phone with him? I would have wanted to have been quite frank with him and to express my deep disappointment in what he was doing. But he didn't hear back. The inquest has learnt that negotiators were not told about offers from Manny Konditsis and the Grand Mufti of Australia to help communicate with Monis. It may not have made a scrap of difference. We'll just never know. So it's that lingering uncertainty that causes me a sense of unease. Coroner Michael Barnes has also heard details about the hastily arranged workspace for negotiators. The team was based in a cramped office in the New South Wales Leagues Club with only one landline phone. If that phone was being used, incoming calls from hostages would be diverted to elsewhere in the building. As darkness fell, senior police continued the contain and negotiate strategy still confident of a peaceful outcome. Our only goal is to get those people that are currently caught in that building out of there safely. There have been some problems in terms of command and control, some problems in terms of the communications between the different layers of the counter-terrorism response forces. Assistant Commissioner Mark Jenkins was in charge in the final hours of the siege. He's given evidence that during a handover he was told hostages appeared casual and jovial. Number one, you would never ever call a hostage situation jovial. Not in your wildest of dreams really would you ever kind of come out with something like that. There was no way any, any of them would have felt that they were jovial. Uh, far from it, they were scared out their, their lives really. And the commander didn't know about the final text sent by hostage Tory Johnson to his family. At 1.43 a.m. he texted that the gunman was increasingly agitated, walks around when he hears a noise outside with a hostage in front of him, wants to release one person out of good faith. Tell police. I find that quite remarkable, to be honest with you, because any communication that comes out of that particular cell, as they call it anyway, um, would have been scrutinised. There would have been eyes on all over that. And, and if there hasn't, then there needs to be kind of um, some review on the system. At 2.03 a.m., man Harry Monis fired his first shot as six hostages escaped. Assistant Commissioner Mark Jenkins was questioned about his decision not to enact an emergency action response then. He explained it was the role of the forward commander based at the scene to trigger that response. But Assistant Commissioner Mark Murdoch told the inquest... To cut to the chase, if the shot fired at 2.03am had have occurred when I was in command, I would have had an expectation the EA would have been launched. This haunting footage shows the beginning of the end as man Haron Monis shot hostage Tory Johnson. Fifty-one seconds later, members of the Tactical Operations Unit began an emergency action.
two deceased amongst the hostages and six that were uninjured. We also have a lone gunman who has been shot and killed. The fact is, uh, two innocent people lost their lives. It's a dreadful thing and we can't unwind that. But we absolutely don't want those losses to be in vain. We must learn from the proceedings, from the coronial inquiry, um, and what those findings are, and ensure that what happens next time, because there will be a next time, that it's done much better.